Hello and welcome um, once again on this Monday afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me. It's a bit cold outside today, isn't it? Um, I can see lots of you logged on already, but what I'll do first is introduce myself if there's anybody new out there. So, um, my name's Simon Williamson and I'm here from Avagoic Designs. I'm here to inspire you with the products from our collections and then show you how to make simple cards that you can um, escalate to the kind of skill level that you want to. Um, as always, we're on um, all media channels, so hit that notification link and you'll be kept informed of any um, upcoming news when it arrives, as you'll be the first to know. So let's say hello to our um, Avagoers that are on at the moment. So we've got uh, Beverly on there, Nola, Leslie, Amanda. I think there was a Melissa as well. It's, it goes, you see, it scrolls up a little bit, but thank you very much. Whether you're in the UK or further afield, it's really nice to have your company. So I thought we'd have a bit of fun today with the Oriental um, collection. So I thought I'd give you some more inspiration using that one. So let's start. Oh, hello, Samantha and Irene. So this one, I thought this was a really cool way to show you how to do a faux background. And it looks a little bit like leatherette, almost like marble kind of texture. I thought it's just a really funky one. You can see there's lots, if I just twist that a little bit, you can see there's lots of creases in that kind of background. There's a lot of texture to it. It's a bit like those papers we used to spend lots of money on. I'm going to show you how to recreate this yourself. So let's start again. Right, so we start off with just a piece of blank white card. And trust me on this because you'll, you'll think I've gone nuts in a minute. But this one here is about seven by five. So we're going to use a seven by five piece of white card, okay? And the first thing we're going to do before we do anything is scrunch it up, okay? Don't have an art stack out there. <laughs> so it's going to scrunch it up. just to get some creases in that card. There you go, we're going to just play around with that and get some really deep creases. Scrunch it really up. And you can manipulate it as well, so if there's areas that are not scrunching the way you want to, you can use your fingers look and you can put some creases in. But what you're trying to do is just get some really nice deep creases going across that piece of card. Some that are raised up and some that are not. You can see that. So we've got a nice bit of textured crumpled card there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Versafine Claire. This is like a, a paler grey one, so it's not the black. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to brush it over these creased edges now where I want it to go. So I'm just going to just lightly just brush it over them creases. You can bend the card as you go in. There's a nice crease there, look. Cover these little bits. You see? And if you're worried about doing too much, just do as much as you feel, and then we'll dry it off, and then we can go back and have a look. But you can see there, I've got some kind of texture coming through now on those joints. I'm going to give that a quick blast with my heat gun just to make sure that ink's actually bonded in the set. I bet you felt gone crackers then, didn't you? Screwing pieces of card up. There we go. And I'm just going to quickly run over my anti static bag, and that's just so that I can protect them grey lines from the next step. Get a good rub over. OK, and then what we're going to do now is going to go in and scrunch it up again. So try and get the creases in different places this time. So let's just go for it this way. Really scrunch it into a ball, and then we can pull it back out afterwards. There you go. Got even more crease marks in there now. So now what I'm going to do, so Nola says I should be good at technique, always scrunching card up. Well, now you can reuse them, Nola, can't you? You can get them scrunched bits out at bin. It might give you another technique this, but it'd be really interesting if you've already got a pattern on there, how it'll turn out. What I want to go now is I want to go back into these crease marks with my embossing pad. I'm just going to brush them in areas over where them crease lines are. Don't want to put too much pressure on that you're going to get the whole of the card. We just want to start picking out some of these areas. Okay. 
I'm going to bring in my embossing powder now. I'm going to use gold with this one, so I think the white and the gold is really classy, and it looks really nice when it's done. And let's just give that a good sprinkle all over. And we'll just give that a tip. Take off that excess, just turn it around as I go. So I've got lots of areas where it can pick up. I just want to make sure I don't get the big clumps. Move that to one side. You can see now I've got loads of gold on there. Let's get that embossed so it actually changes how it looks. It's a great one, this one, though, to do with a kid's inset. And I like the little loose bits as well in between, so it just gives it a different kind of depth as well. There we go, just change those bits. Try not to burn my finger. Just make sure I've got all those little areas of gold. There we go. And then you can have a look at it. And if you decide you want some more grey, you can add a little bit more. So I've got some areas here that I think are a little bit too wide. So I'm just going to just crease them a little bit different. Go back in with the grey, just add a little bit more kind of colour, just to build it up. This is what I'm saying, I'm great fun with this one. And build it up as much as you want to. There you go, I'm really happy with that. It's just kind of give it two kind of colours throughout. So then what we're going to do, we're just going to ease this back so it's a little bit flatter now. So you can do this however you want to. You could even run it through your embossing machine if you want to, but I don't want to take all the creases out on this one, so I do like that bit of texture. There we go, I like that. And then, just simply, we're going to put this onto a nice black mount and a gold it'll just make them colours pop and you can see we've got kept all that texture in there as well so let's use um tape runner and wet glue so we can make sure it's secure but that's easily something you could have a go with isn't it at home it really is let's use let me just chop this bit off this glue so it's just not coming out very fast Oh, do you know? We'll just go with tape runner, I think. So it don't want to come out of there. Here we go. So I'm going to squash it down to that corner. And then just tease it towards the edge of your layer. And then you're going to get some nice kind of definition as well on that. Look at that. I mean, look how much texture's in that. It's like a piece of leather right? almost, isn't it? Let's get some tape on the back of this. And then let's mount that onto that gold there. I've gone with that black and that gold so I can bring out the embossing for the gold and the grey and the black kind of really help. And I've got a plain white card. We're going to stick it onto this. Use a bit of wet glue on this. There we go. And let's get that mounted onto our card. And give that a good push down. Maureen says, sorry, she's late. Don't you worry, Maureen. That's the beauty of this um, How to Craft Network, isn't it? You can catch up when you need to. But there we go. So we've got a lovely 
kind of background now for our design. And you can see I've got all them textures in there and that gold embossing. And you could do these in all different colours. I mean, just at this stage to show you, look how well that looks out on the blue. Look at all the texture in that. So you can really adopt this to kind of the, the colour scheme that you want for your, um, the project that you want to do. But just to show you, you know what I mean? It's totally different effect on a different colour as well. Right, so let's build this up then now. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to concentrate on this little panel on this main card. And this is the little scene there with the moon in the background and then part of our lovely oriental dye that's in our Avago collection. So let's get our pagoda cut using the die cutter. Let's put that down. And I know that I want to use the area with the pagoda in it. So um, on this die cut, I'm going to lay it onto the magnetic mat. And then I can position the card over the top where I want it. So I'm going to go, I think, about there. And let's run that through. I like simple cards, though. And I like this gold and black. I think it really gives it a pop. And that's what we're here for, isn't it? An effective card. There. Take our die. And you can see there now we've got a lovely outline that's really going to go against our background to make this design pop. Especially when it goes on that black look. Look at that. Love this detail and all these little windows that fall out as well. So let's get that gold on the black, first of all. I think I need some read the books. <laughs> Here we go. Let's get that onto there. Gives it a nice kind of gold border. And then we could just put this straight on top of there, which is another kind of gold effect. But I like the moon that just breaks it up. So quite simply, I'm just going to use a round circle punch and a piece of scrap white card that I've got. So let's get our moon chopped out. That's brilliant. So let's get this glued on first of all. A little bit of glue up there. We're getting more and more people joining us. That was, it's lovely to see the um, group growing. So uh, hi to Peapod's Crafty Corner. If I miss anybody else, I do apologise. It does go a little bit fast sometimes. But welcome. It's nice for you to join. And then we can tuck this in. I think there, look, just behind, peeping through, and it adds to the effect. I'm just going to give that a good push down. And that's our element there. I'll keep them up there for us. And now it's going to work on the sentiment panel, which is going to go across this section. So I'm just going to push these out of this frame a second, bring up the stamping platform. Hi, Brenda. Don't worry if you're late, love. So I'm going to use that really nice sentiment called Be Yourself and You Can Be Anything. And that's in the actual um, collection. And let's get a scrap of white card. that down. We'll do it towards the bottom, then I can um, cut it a bit easily after. There we go. Let's pick that up. I could do it in grey, but I think actually doing it in black is going to make the sentiment pop a little bit more. Let's pick that up. Give that a good push down. Lizzo says, the background creases are like the mountains the pagoda is on. You know, I just, I was going to do it with the other collection, the new one, but I thought it really suited this one. So I thought we'd um, change the main characters of it, really, and interact it with the oriental one. So I've got that. I'm just going to get the paper trimmer now, so we can just bring that down in size a little bit. Let's pop that there. I 
I'm just going to trim it along the top as well. There we go. And I'm going to map this up in the same colours that we've done with the other. So we've got black and gold. So I'm going to stick it onto a piece of um, black first to make it pop. Stick it towards the corner that you want, and you only have to cut two sides. Give that a good push down. Let's bring in the trimmer again. One thing with these trimmers, they're so versatile, aren't they? I'm doing this. You can see through the little opaque window where you're going to be cutting. Just get that corner off so we can see a little easier. There we go. And I'm going to put it on the gold then so it just ties all the card in. So we've edged it all in black and gold then. A little bit more glue. Onto this gold mirror. Give that a second to grab. This time we'll do my little bits up while we've got a second. There we go. Bring in the trimmer again. I'm just going to make sure we've got that border matching all the way around. We're just starting to move with it being wet glow, but just hold it there. And how simple are that, really? We've got our three elements now that we're going to need to complete this card. I've got our little pagoda, our sentiment, and our lovely textured background. I wish you could feel this through the televis. It's brilliant to tell you. Right, so let's get some height to this now. I'm going to use some foam tape. I'm going to put this bit down first. There we go. And we just take that off the back of there. I'm going to use my scissors to help me remove this back in. Oh, do you know me? Double sided stuff. We always fight, don't we? One bit. Let's get the other one started. There we go, so we get those two bits off. I'm going to position it now in the top corner, and that means that we don't lose the, no, I mean, we cover up all those effects. So if we do it a little bit off centre, light up to there, make sure I'm opening the right way. Yeah. I think I'm going to go around there. I'm just going to give that a push down, make sure it adheres well. And then the sentiment, we can choose where we put it. We can put it lower down, we can have it over the bottom of there, but I actually think it looks really nice when it breaks up both of these sections. Let's get some foam pads on that. Now, we're going to need one layer underneath this bit and two layers under this bit to keep the height, okay? So if you just flip it that way, it'll help you to remember. It's one at this side. And two at this side. So, am I missing a comment there? We've had this conversation before, Simon. Oh, I, don't, I think I missed your original comment there, sorry. Just getting that back in off there. And then because we've got one layer at this side and two at that, when we put it on there, it's going to keep the height and allow me to break that kind of air up. Um, there we go. I'll stand it up for you. And that's our first card. I think that's really good, that. It's something a little bit different from me as well. So I'm, I do like um, three-dimensional cards, but um, it's quite textured, this one, from me. Oh, more in the double-sided tape. Oh, I don't know. I think if we can invite, invent some that actually does tear away easily, we'll be a millionaires, I tell you. No matter which brand, I just, I, I just have trouble with them. I think they attract to me. 
But <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that first demonstration anyway. It just shows you how versatile I mean, the stamps can be. But hopefully, hopefully it gives you an idea for a background that you might be able to incorporate in one of your projects as well. So we're going to play some inspiration now from the rest of the Avago range. I'll be back with another demonstration and continue with the Oriental collection. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Hi, my name's Simon Williamson. I'm the guest demonstrator for Avago Ink Designs. Avago Inks is a, it's basically images that we can put together so anybody can have a go. I think I love the most about crafting is it can just give you time out in your own head. It can just down tools, not think about your mobile phone and just enjoy what you're going to do. Create a project and be proud of what you've made. My inspiration comes really from lots of sources. I love like looking at current trends. I like looking through the internet. I like looking at what other people make. And I think truly inspiration comes from picking bits out of everything you see, pull it all together and make something that you can do with your skills. Avago products, we've got three collections out at the moment. We've got as dinosaur range, as farmyard range, and as little owl collection. And the main crux of the actual design is that there's a big image there, and a little character you can play around, have fun, and there's always some puns in there as well, so you can liven up the card and make it a bit humorous for everybody. I think if you're thinking about trying one of our products, is don't be afraid. Just buy any of the kits that you, I mean, you feel like you want to, and you'll always create a really good card from there. There's some good characters, good sentiments, and some really fun images in there. So just, just grab one and have a go. And welcome back. Um, I see a suggestion from People's Crafty Corner. I need one of the fantastic pokey tools from Tony's collection. So on your say so, I'll collect one on the way past, if you know what I mean. <laughs> No, I think, be, I think I do need a poker tool. I don't know where I've put mine. So this next one, I have incorporated the background from the officially awesome collection, the fish ones, and I just think it goes really well with this design that I've come up with. How beautiful does that look? And it's almost like, you forget it was a scale background. It looks like those like kind of oriental fans. I'm just supposed to put it on its side. And that white on white, doesn't it make it pop? And it just shows you as well how we can make them little flowers turn into a big focal point of the card. So let's have a go with this one then. So the first thing I've done is I've pre-cut two pieces of white card, and that's the size that I want the background to be. So exactly the same size. I'll just measure it on here so you know. So it's just over four and a half by six and a half, and then that'll centralize in a five by seven card. So that's why I've done it that kind of size. So I'm going to leave one of them out of the way. I'm going to die cut this one. So bring in my plate. I'm going to bring in that lovely background eye that we've got with that kind of the scales. Put that down. And then let's put this over the top. I'm just going to tack it in place, that one, but I can't locate my stuff. So I'm just going to put this on and I'll hold it tight until it actually takes it through. Here we go. So we're just going to run that through. It's a lovely die, this one as well. It gives you some real depth to your card. Cuts like a dream as well. It really does. There we go. All done. That's fine. I'm just going to lift that off. Just take those little loose bits out. Move that to the side. Just look at that. Look at the intricacy of that. So whether you put that on top of a coloured piece of card, you know, like if we, I'll just show you that. Look at how much detail you can get with that. But I just think for today's demo, I want to do it white on white so it makes the flowers pop even more. So the first thing we're going to do then is mount this onto the exact same piece, sized piece of card that I've already got and get this glued into position. You can do this the way you prefer. I put put a bit of glue on my hand, but obviously if you've got allergies, don't do this. Um, I think you can get some like little um, intricate glue sticks from some of the other companies out there. So it might be worth trying with those if you prefer. And I just tap it around the edge, make sure we get glue all around this. Pick that up, just take some of the middle. There we go. Let's get that into position. Line it up at this side and just take it across our cardstock. Just hold that down a second to grab. And there we go. We've got that lovely background already. Look. 
How effective is that? And there's not a lot of effort gone into that and easily, easily for you to reproduce. I'm just going to get this glove my hand. Okay, so the next step then is we need to create that branch that's going to go across the card. I'm just going to leave that to one side to bond. So I'll pull that up there. And then all I'm going to do this for this is I've got a piece of brown card. I'm going to freehand this design. So you can do it however you prefer. So if I leave this up here, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I want to kind of do kind of a trunk design that goes across my card. So I know the kind of width I need to stay within. So I've got my piece of blank card ready. So if we just, I'm going to draw it with a black. You could um, do this with pencil though, but I just thought it'd be easy for you to see. So I'm just going to just treat it like a piece of um, free hand drawing. It doesn't have to be exact, so I want one that goes that way, and I want one that goes up here, comes down here, and then this one's going to go up there somewhere, I think. And then we might have some little ones coming off, kind of in those kind of things. So you should be able to see that, I hope, on the brown. And then I then go in with the scissors and freehand it. So you could draw more lines if you want to, or you could just use it as like kind of a guide. But all I'm going to do is go in with my scissors, and just play around a little bit. Remember to keep turning your cards so you can kind of get a wavy edge. And then take that back. I'm just going to keep following this around where I want those lines. You could also, if you want to draw it on reverse on the back, but you have to remember to make it point the other way. So ideally, I wouldn't have drawn on the front, but it's fine. I just want to show you the kind of pattern we're going to do. I'm going to chop that bit off that we don't need. I'm going to take that back up again. So as we're going towards the, this side, they're going to be finer, the actual branches. So I'll take that away again. And I can start the return then. So let's take this really fine at this edge and let's start returning it back. And then let's just take that small branch back into it. Nearly there. And then I'm going to take that back around the trunk. Up this way, actually. And then we're going to connect this back now to the main body. So obviously this side, it needs to be a bit thicker than this side. So we're just going to build it up a little bit as we go towards the edge of that card. There we go. See, so we've got a nice kind of branch kind of shape coming together and the thing is it doesn't have to be perfect does it so if it's not working just to, it's your shape isn't it make it work it's fine so I'm happy with that so let's get this background put together and then we've got some kind of base we can glue upon so I've got a nice deep pink just to set off our colors that we're going to be doing in a second And I put our lovely panel that we've created on top of that. So we've got a nice vibrant border. There we go. Push that down. And then I'm going to put that on top of our white card blank. It's just a nice pretty card, isn't it? I think Nola said that as well. Just thought it's a little bit different. So, popping that onto our card blank. Here we go. Really starting to take um, hold that background now. And then let's get this into position. So, we'll give it a little bit of texture by just curling it around a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely flat. Molding it around a little bit with my fingers. You could also ink these edges if you want to. So, let's get a bit of glue on the back of this. 
just taking that down onto the card, right as far as we can get it, really. That's it. And then we can decide where we're going to put this on our card. So I think we're going to go right up to the edge and just pop that down. And we'll let that glue take hold. Just hold that in position a second. There you go. So let's put that to one side. Now we need to make the flowers that are going to go on there. So quite simply, I'm going to use all those tiny flowers that you get in the collection. If I just bring them in, they're really tiny ones, these. You can see them on the mat if I put them there. And they're normally like, just like extras, aren't they, in the collection? But I thought, let's use them this time to make the central design. So I'm going to use a piece of pink card. I've got a stamping block, so let's pop them on there. Make sure that's put down. And I've got a selection of different pink kind of shaded inks. These are all from the eyes ink range. So I've got the cerise, the rose, and the framboise. So let's go with the cerise, I think. I think I want a vibrant kind of pink. So let's tap them. Whoop. Let's take that one off. It's trying to escape. And that one. <laughs> tap this one down here. I think in my um, anti-static bags touch these stamps, that's why they're not sticking as well today. Let's try and get this one down. I've done it purposely on textured cardstock as well, just so we get um, a little bit more detail really than a solid print. Put that one down there. There we go. And we'll just bring that small one in at the end. There we go. You can do as many as you want to, but I'm just going to cut a few of these out so we can build up our collection. I've already done some in these other shades as well, so and I've already started cutting a few out so you can see how they look. Let's chop into this and get some of these delicate flowers cut out. You might also have like a, a punch at home, like a flower shape, so you could always do the design and put your punch over it and you'll get some really interesting kind of effects then. But I'm just going to just, just take this around the edge, really, to get our big flower cut out. Not being too new, so I like that kind of pink that kind of comes out of it as well. There we go, so we've got our big flower. Now let's cut out... I think we'll have this little square one here. I like this one. It's a bit of a different shape, isn't it? So I'm just taking that round. You could also as well um, layer these up to so give a bit more three dimension. But I'm going to keep these quite flat for today's card. There we go. So what we can do is bring it back in our design. I can see I've got some of these flowers all in different shades of pink now add to our collection. I've also done some of the little leaves in green, and that'll just help bring this same kind of design together. So let's start gluing these into position. So I think we'll have a larger one up here. And I'm going to put some different shade just to break it up. Let's put that smaller one just peeping there, look. And just have a bit of fun, really. Just kind of put them where you think they need to be. Have another large one here, I think. And less is more, you don't have to cover the whole thing. And I think we'll just have one up here. And I think that's enough flowers actually on there. I'm just going to use some of these little green leaves now to break up and give a bit more contrast. 
Let's tuck one of those in. I think we'll have one here. And then put one just behind here. There we go. Let's go push them down. So, because I make so many cards for Right to Charity, I've had to fill that pink page with loads of tiny flowers, otherwise, we're struggling with waste. There's too much pretty pink cardstock. Oh, I know, I know. I, well, at home, it's a bit different, isn't it? But I kind of want to make a nice card in front of this camera, and sometimes you just kind of go, it's done. <laughs> so, that's our background with our lovely tiny kind of like flowers put into position. What I've also got is I've got some little gems that we can put into the center. And that's just going to bring the centers out a little bit more. So let's just attach some of those while we're at this stage. Turn that over. It really does just give it another like kind of level of bling, doesn't it? Just doing these last couple of flowers. And if you don't use the gems, you could easily use um, like your stickles or a bit of glitter. Just make sure those push down. But now we need to work on our sentiment for the card. So I'm going to push that to one side just a second. I'm going to bring in this brilliant tag punch. This is a Stamps By Me one. But I love this. I think it really helps this card. So I've cut some strips, and these strips are two inch. So I'm just going to use this to create the top of these. So I'll push those in. Do the same with the pink one. There we go. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually stamp the sentiment onto this white one first before we cut anything down to size. So I'll bring up the stamping platform. Yeah, I, I know um, people at Crafty Corner. It's um, sometimes just you need to just um, stamp away, don't you? But at home, yeah, I'd, I'd, um, I'd have an art attack. I do use all my scraps, though. I do have um, colour bins for all my scraps at home, so I've always got like a, all the pinks go into it, and then I reuse them wherever I can. So I'm going to go for best wishes on this one. I'm going to do it in the Versifying Black. Give that a good push down. There we go. Let's take that out of there. And what we can do now, we know how big it's going to be, is we're going to actually trim this down in size, OK? So I'll bring up the paper trimmer again. And the best way I've found to do this is to use the pink and the white, put them together, and then that way we can layer them really well afterwards, but still be the same depth. So cut them both at the same time. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of pink ribbon through there. So I've got some nice, nice coordinating coloured pink. Let's pop that through to connect our two pieces. And you can do a bow, but I'm not very good at bows, I'll be honest. But I kind of just loop them through like this. I like this effect. Give it a bit of a pull. I do that up there, and then you can trim these to whatever length you want. I'm going to put a little bit of a fishtail on these, so I'm just going to crease them in half. And then cut them this way. Crease them in half again. And then we'll just cut that one. Just finishes it off a little bit, doesn't it? And if we bring in our card now, we're going to do it. Sorry, this is the wrong one. This one, <laughs> that one's finished. But then you can pull these apart a little bit to give yourself a little bit more of this colour that comes back in with the background. So put a little dob of glue underneath. And then that's going to allow you to manoeuvre that to where you want it. So I'm going to put mine just there. And I've got a nice kind of bold flash of that pink. And I'm going to use some more of the foam pad. on the back. Just take that backing off. 
Oh, come on, release. There we go. Just bring that blue so it's back where we wanted it. I'm going to pop that just there. A bit of height. Pull out my ribbon a little bit so it just displays it a bit better. And there you go. Done that up for you. That's your second card for today. I just think that's a really nice card you can have fun with. And you can change them flower colours to colours that you, not you want to use, but just wanted to show you those little background stamps you get on the sheets you can actually make your focal cards with. And um, I would have thought that would have been a fishy background. You know what I mean, it doesn't. It looks very oriental. So bring in the other one that we made today as well. Just to catch up on your comments, make sure I've not missed any. There you go. The two very different cards, really, aren't they? But both showing you um, how you can have a go yourself and make them interesting backgrounds. Um, I love the flower one, because it's a bit creative, and you can layer them flowers on where you want to, change them colour tones. But I also love that, that kind of like textured background of this one, you know what I mean? It gives you a real kind of a leatherette feel. And was, you could have a play around and do them in browns as well, so you can get a proper leather feel to your card. But I hope you've enjoyed those two designs. Um, it gives you some inspiration to use the Avago products. Um, and that's it for today, I think. So I um, hope you can join me next week at the same time on Monday at one o'clock. But other than that, we'll see you soon. Thanks very much for joining us.